What's up everybody and welcome back to another video here on the Simply Car Things YouTube channel. Today I wanted to sit down and make somewhat of a quick yet in-depth overview and review on a tire known as the Federal 595 RSRR. These are tires which I am currently running on my BMW M4, and within the automotive community, they are known as a cheap track day tire that offers pretty good performance at a relatively low price point. So I've been running these on my car now for almost a month now, and I've also had the opportunity to run a track day um, with these tires on my M4. And so I figured now is an appropriate time to sit down and give some feedback regarding these RSRRs, talk about some of the pros and talk about some of the cons as well because there are certainly a lot of positive and negative aspects about these tires. Federal tires were established in 1954 and they are a Taiwanese based tire manufacturer and they've been around for quite some time now producing tires for a variety of applications for vehicles but obviously for this review we're going to be focusing primarily on the 595 RSRR which has been around for some time now I believe 2016 is when this tire was introduced and so it is starting to you know get pretty old it's definitely not a new tire that's utilizing new technology the 595 RSRR is a 200 treadwear tire so within the 200 treadwear tire segment or category there is some pretty stiff competition that you know federal is going up against here we're looking at tires like the Yokohama Advan AO 52s the Falcon RT 660s the Bridgestone RE 71 R's Nanking CR ones which are overall all of those are pretty excellent performing tires especially when considered from a track focus perspective the federal 595 RSRR has a lot to deliver upon the biggest incentive again is the price so I am running the 295 by 30 by 18 uh, 595 RSRR, which is pretty much the largest size that they manufacture for this specific tire. I'm running it on all four corners. It's a squared setup and out the door I paid like $830 or $840, which is pretty damn cheap for a 200 treadwear track focused tire that can also be driven on a day-to-day -day basis on the street. So from a street driving perspective, what are some of the good things? What are some of the bad things? Overall, these are a very comfortable tire. Although I will say that with the specific sizes that I'm running, the 295 by 30, the thinner sidewall, I have noticed that it does translate a little bit more of, you know, undulations in the road and some, you know, stiffness and, and maybe a little bit of vibration um, into the cabin of the car because there's just less of a cushion on the tire. Even with that said, um, in terms of comfort overall, they are quite good. The dry grip on them is excellent on the street. They have tons of grip, more than enough grip than, than you'll ever need for street driving or even if you like to go hit some canyons every now and then. And, um, and just in terms of the overall ability to put the power down, to provide traction to the vehicle, it's all there. The biggest downside to these tires by far is the noise that they create. Now this is something that has been talked about and discussed quite a bit. You know, I think it's no secret that these tires, if you have done any research or if you've ran these tires before, they are very, very noisy. I mean, noisy to the point where it almost sounds like you're in an aircraft that is taking off on a runway. That is how loud they are. Um, the tires just love to make this very deep howl sound whenever you're cruising at around 50 to 60 miles per hour even on the freeway so if you're someone that really appreciates um, you know low NVH and likes a quiet cabin or a quiet interior space these tires are definitely not going to be for you just because of that factor alone however for someone like me my car is pretty heavily modified it is also very loud because of the exhaust setup I also tend to blast music whenever I'm driving so I can you know deal with the noise but um, even then you know if I'm going out of my way to make it a point that these tires are noisy they are very very noisy but 295 with the Federal is more like a 305 they tend to run about a size up from when, what they're actually displayed as. And that tends to be um, a common characteristic with a lot of R comp tires that they're not particularly true to size and that they do tend to run wide overall. These RSRRs tend to have a little bit of a lip on the side of them and it just looks ugly uh, from just a visual standpoint. I don't like that. I mean, maybe some people will like it because you know, if you were to like curb your wheel on accident, you're probably gonna hit the little lip on the tire before you hit your wheel, which is kind of nice. But from a visual standpoint, I do not like that at all. And in the wet as well, as long as you're not going crazy and you're not driving like a maniac in the rain, you are going to be just fine. Now, maybe in certain conditions, in severe rain situations or very, very heavy pouring rain, you may potentially run into some hydroplaning issues, but the flame tread patterns 
on the tires, like the grooved uh, cutouts that they have on them do help to deflect a lot of water out. But I mean, here in Southern California, at least, that's just not a problem because for the most part year round, it's pretty much dry. So overall, the grip is fantastic. Now let's go ahead and move into the track side of things. So uh, recently, just the other day, I was at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway uh, here in uh, Desert Center, California. Got to run a full track day, uh, about five sessions or so on these RSRRs in my BMW M4. What I have found is that there is a very narrow window where these tires feel really good on track. I would say maybe one to two, possibly three laps on a, on a racetrack these tires have excellent grip, not only from a straight line acceleration point of view, but also the lateral grip on them is pretty darn good. Um, just taking the car through various sweepers, being able to accelerate and power out of corners as well. The car hooked up pretty much every single time. Uh, the BMW M4 produces a lot of torque. It is a very high powered car as well with its twin turbo inline six. So it's very easy to step the rear end out on the car. Um, and the only time that I found that I was really losing grip or traction in the earlier sessions, uh, it was if I was trail braking too hard, you know, midway through a turn or through a sweeper. So again, for the first few laps, they're awesome. The problem is these tires have a very quick drop off period. So after that point of maybe two to three laps of really hard driving, you're pushing the car, the tires almost just seem to fall flat on their face, as in they grease up, they lose a lot of grip and it just becomes a complete slide fest after that and the tires are going to need to cool down you're going to need to you know, when you get off track you're going to uh, go ahead and need to bleed air pressure out of the tires make sure you're managing um, your pressures overall as well it's obviously something very important when you're track driving uh, but they fall off very very quickly and keep in mind this was also in pretty ideal conditions on the track so it was a completely dry day uh, it was also pretty cool in the morning I would say around 50 to 60 degrees out on track and then as the day went on it was closer to about 70 degrees or so that was about the highest that it ever got to in terms of ambient temperatures and still these tires will overheat pretty fast and so they do have a very small window of time where you can utilize them you know you can set uh, a pb or you can try to set a, a couple hot laps in but after that don't expect to get a ton out of them before you'll need to do like one or two cool down laps before you can start romping on them you can get another two to three hot laps in maybe and then after that it's just you know rinse and repeat so in terms of like an endurance tire or something that you can just keep going out and pounding the crap out of those tires on track the RSRRs are definitely not it. Uh, they have pretty good grip overall when they are gripping, but after they sort of hit that point of no return, they, like I said, they just tend to fall flat. Now granted, Chuckwalla Raceway, where I went ahead and had the track day, is a 2.6 mile racetrack. It's got about 17 turns, tons of sweepers. It is in the middle of the desert. It is a very dusty track because the wind loves to blow sand and little bits of gravel all over the track. So of course, you know, I'm sure that also played a role in the ability of the tires to grip at their maximum efficiency. Overall, that is going to be my verdict on the 595 RSRRs. On the street, they're a great tire as long as you can pretty much just get over the noise issues. And then on track, they are a good tire as well, especially if you're just looking to learn your car well, if you're, you know, on the beginner side of things, or maybe you're on a budget. It's worth trying them out, I would say just because of how cheap they are. And if you like them, hey, great. If not, hey, at least you didn't drop 13, 1400 bucks on a set of R comps that you absolutely hate. But in terms of the competition, I would say the Federal 595 RSRR probably ranks at the very you know bottom in terms of the 200 treadwear offerings out there. So the, the RE71s, the CRSs, um, the AO52s, those are all going to be superior tires. But at the same time, you're also going to be paying, you know, 60, 70 percent more in terms of price. And so you kind of have to, you know, weigh that cost to benefit ratio and uh, make your own decision from that based off how serious you are about tracking your own car. So I hope this review was helpful or informative to some of you guys. This is my first ever tire review on the channel. So, you know, bear with me if some of my thoughts were a little bit jumbled and mixed up. But with all that being said, guys, if you could go ahead and smash the thumbs up button on this video, as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel down below, I would appreciate that immensely. And with all that being said, I will catch you all in the next one. Take it easy, my friends. Bye-bye.